Alcatraz. For a time, it was viewed as the ultimate maximum security prison. Closed down as a penitentiary in 1963, it remains one of the most iconic prisons in the world. Alcatraz is not like any other prison in the United States. Many convicts tried getting out on their own terms, but the most high profile of escape plots occurred in 1962, when three men disappeared from their cells. Their story was turned into one of the all-time great prison escape films. Released by Paramount Pictures in 1979, Escape from Alcatraz. No one has ever escaped from Alcatraz. Alcatraz began operation as a maximum security prison in 1934. The island had many previous uses, including as a fort during the Civil War and as a military prison. When turned into a federal penitentiary, the facility gained a reputation as one of the most inhospitable in the United States holding high-profile criminals like Al Capone and George Machine Gun Kelly. Alcatraz also contained prisoners considered high risks for escape. With its stringent prisoner check system and the island being surrounded by frigid, choppy waters, escaping alive was considered near impossible. But in 1962, three prisoners, Clarence Anglin, John Anglin, and Frank Morris, tried overcoming the odds. Their story was featured in the 1963 book Escape from Alcatraz, which caught the eye of Richard Tuggle, who wrote a screenplay based on the non-fiction publication. Richard Tuggle was able to get director Don Siegel to look at the screenplay. Clint Eastwood also became involved in the project. Siegel and Eastwood had already worked on a number of films together, most notably the classic crime thriller, Dirty Harry. The interest from both Siegel and Eastwood led to the film going into production in 1978. Welcome to Alcatraz. The film begins with Frank Morris, played by Clint Eastwood, on his way to the prison of Alcatraz as a newly arriving inmate. Frank is processed and given a cell. The next day, Frank gets a sense of life in the prison, meeting Litmus, who shares his food with a mouse, and Wolf. Frank has a meeting with the warden, who outlines what life on Alcatraz will be like. Alcatraz is a maximum security prison with very few privileges. We don't make good citizens but we make good prisoners. After Frank deals with some of the challenges of life as an inmate on Alcatraz, he's sent to the library to help another prisoner named English. The two begin building a friendship. While delivering books and magazines to the other prisoners, Frank learns about the solitary confinement cells in D Block, where prisoners are kept in darkness. In the prison yard, Frank meets Doc, passing his time painting. What's the flower? That's something inside me. They can't lock up with their bars and wolves. Frank spots English sitting at the top of some steps and is given a sense of the hierarchy among the prisoners. Something special about those steps? The higher you sit, the more status you got. So we kind of play king of the mountain. Except here we don't play for fun, man. Frank brings up that no one has ever escaped from Alcatraz. English explains how difficult escape would be. See that water? It's over a mile of swim to land. The coverage make it seem like 10. The water's so cold, it will numb your arms in a matter of minutes. As Frank is talking with Doc, Wolf approaches to attack Frank. Both Wolf and Frank are placed in solitary. After what seems to be a few days, Frank is allowed back to his regular cell. Frank then meets a new prisoner, Charlie. Later, Frank notices a cockroach by the grill into the wall and takes a closer look. As Frank walks to sit down and eat, he sees two new but familiar faces, Clarence and John Anglin, 
sent to Alcatraz after attempting to break out of a prison in Atlanta. Once again in his cell, Frank waits for the guard to pass by, turns off his light and starts chipping away at the concrete around the grill using a nail clipper he stole from the warden, but only has the chance to do so for a few seconds. While sitting with Charlie and the Anglin brothers, Frank tells them he may have found a way out. What are our chances? Slim. I'm in. Me too. Wanna go? Over many days, Frank and the others slowly break away the concrete, while also collecting supplies to help them escape. Eventually, Frank is able to get the grill out and see into the wall. They are also able to get art supplies that allow them to make plaster heads and fake grills that they can easily remove from the wall when they need to get out of their cells. Frank is able to explore some areas of the prison to figure out an escape route. Having collected enough supplies and coming up with a route, they set a day to get out. After Frank says goodbye to English and a close call with the warden, the escape is on. You're going to. Frank and the Anglins make their way to the rooftop. Charlie ends up not joining them, initially staying in his cell, then trying to get out, but doesn't make it to the roof. The three prisoners cautiously cross the roof, reach a pipe they climb down, and get to the water. They inflate their makeshift raft and start swimming for land. The next morning, the prisoners are found to be missing an extensive search takes place. On nearby Angel Island, the warden is shown some of the supplies used in the escape. He discovers a flower on the rocks. The film ends with a message of how Frank Morris and the Anglins were never found, and that Alcatraz was closed less than a year later. I wonder if they made it. They drowned. Escape from Alcatraz carries with it a very cold, stark feel, presenting a hard and isolated existence in prison. But the film remains engaging from beginning to end. The cold and almost hopeless feeling the film establishes is occasionally countered by its characters, who do try and make small connections with each other, trying to find little moments of joy, be it through creativity or subtle humor. Also of note is the subdued yet sinister portrayal of the Warden by Patrick McGowan, who is probably best known playing number six in the 1960s series The Prisoner. I am not a number. I am a person. The production was in many ways fortunate to be able to film at Alcatraz. Shut down as a prison in 1963, the island was opened to the public in 1973 as a tourist attraction. But this also brought about many challenges, such as filming on a small island that reportedly needed multiple upgrades, such as having its electricity reconnected from the mainland. Having tourists exploring the island during the day also put limitations on the filming schedule. With Escape from Alcatraz based on a true story, how accurate was this film to the real thing? The film left out certain details about the escape attempt, such as that the men set up a hidden workshop in a concealed area. They used this workshop to assemble a 6 foot by 14 foot rubber raft, wooden paddles, and life vests. The film portrays the three men using a more simplistic flotation device without paddles, but these changes in detail don't take away from the story. One major true-to-life detail, presented at the film's end, is that the final fate of these three men is still unknown. Did they make it across San Francisco Bay, or did they drown? The case has been explored in multiple books and documentaries over the years, with new evidence presented as to whether the prisoners survived the escape. The FBI investigated the case until 1979. At that point, the case was taken up by the U.S. Marshals, who still have the investigation open. There's theories about if they left at a certain time, the tides would have 
been in their favor and they could have made it ashore. Uh, there's theories that they were in South America. My general sense of it, there's a more likelihood that they didn't make it. Even in recent years, the search continues with new leads and the use of newer technology. A letter allegedly written by one of the escapees recently came to light. My name is John England. I escaped from Alcatraz in June 1962 with my brother Clarence and Frank Morris. The U.S. Marshals, which is the sole agency investigating the case today, says the FBI lab examined the letter for fingerprints and DNA and the handwriting. The FBI's results for this letter were inconclusive. While the real-life investigation will likely not reach a definitive conclusion, the daring escape attempt of these three men, told with great skill through the cinema, will live on for years to come. Remember, hit the like button, share the video, and to see more from the Cinema Forum, subscribe to this channel.